So phase three is the official launch of um, Race on Custom Maps, um, released currently available for the BRZ and GT86 FRS. Custom Maps enables you to create your own maps. You can pretty much create whatever you want. You can create compensation maps for pressure, temperature, speed, gear. You can do it against fuel, ignition, boost pressure. These are, these are just a few of the settings and parameters that you can choose that are available. You can also set the custom maps to work in all or any of the four map switch modes. You can also set the custom maps up to work in speed density mode. Custom map examples. Now these are typical examples of custom maps that people have been setting up. We've been doing a fair lot of testing. There was a, a, a lot of testing that was needed to get this working right. Um, but typically they've been used on the GTR for setting up custom boost control, creating a very dedicated, simple boost control system. Um, ethanol tuning using flex fuel sensor import and the traction control, more recently, very recently, the traction control using the latest uh, wheel speed differential in custom maps for controlling ignition timing during wheel slip. So we'll go through a few typical settings. Okay, so this particular example, ROM is for 2010 Euro uh, Gen 1 GTR, and it's been set up for uh, custom boost control and traction control. It's using the latest race on feature file version 12738. And the custom maps that have been used are custom map A, which is the wastegate duty for a target boost pressure, custom map E, which is a wastegate multiplier for coolant temperature and air temperature, custom map F is a wastegate duty proportional map. Custom map G, wastegate duty integral value. Custom map M is traction control based. It can calculate wheel speed slip amount between two wheels. And it's only active in map switch mode 4. And map N for November applies ignition retard based on the wheel slip amount. Okay, so first of all, the race run boost control. So we go into custom maps, custom map A, that's quite a big map, um, points. I'm just going to take some of this away to help it easier to get it all on the screen. Okay, what we've got here is the wastegate duty map for a given boost pressure. So we can see custom map A is enabled to work in mode three and mode four. So it's possible you could run factory boost control in mode one and mode two, and custom boost control using custom maps in mode three and mode four. We haven't chosen any other features like enable only when speed density is active, only when it's in launch control, only when the VDC is off. Debug means that we can run the map and we can log the output of the map, but it won't actually do anything. All the calculations will be done like it's going to do something, but we can log the results to make sure the map works as we expect before we let it go live. We can also have the check engine light on when the map is active. We haven't got any activation delays or thresholds uh, we, we're not setting this map against anything we could set the map up to say only come on when we're over 50 percent axle pedal only when the battery voltage is over nine volts only when the coolant temps over 50 degrees the list is endless and we can also put a delay period to stop the map coming in if we wanted a slight delay for some reason but this is a um, this is the wastegate duty for a target boost pressure So the output of the map is going to be wastegate duty and it's going to replace the current wastegate duty. 
the x-axis the desired boost so using the race one boost controller I'm gonna make it slightly bigger so we can see it so if we choose 1.2 bar boost on our race one boost controller we're going to be traveling down this line here this is going to be our wastegate duty x-axis is desired boost and our y-axis is engine speed which should have been fairly obvious here so engine speed against rpm so this is basically our wastegate duty custom map e is a compensation map it's a wastegate duty multiplier for coolant temperature and air temperature again it's only enabled in maps three and four the output is wastegate duty and it's multiplied so if we're in this region here then the value is one so the wastegate duty will stay the same check the axis so the x-axis is coolant temperature and the y-axis is configured as intake air temperature sensor so basically if the intake air temperature is between 12 and 52 degrees C and the coolant temp is between 70 and 105 C nothing's going to happen with the wastegate duty but when it's cold it's going to reduce the wastegate duty now this, this map is directly acting on wastegate duty. If your target boost pressure is say 1.2 bar and it's 20 degrees C, the ECU using custom maps we've set up proportional and integral values, it will increase wastegate duty to hit that. So just because we're reducing the wastegate duty for um, cold coolant temperature, low coolant temperature let's say, and high air temperature etc., you should also set one up for the boost target. So if we've got really high intake air, or we've got really cold intake air, low coolant temperature, etc., we take the boost down um, as well as the wastegate duty. Map F is our prop, our proportional. So we come to map F. and we can see this is set up it's enabled in mode 3 and 4 because we want the custom boost control to work in mode 3 and 4 it's going to act on wastegate duty and it's going to be added to the wastegate duty map the x-axis is boost error the difference between target boost pressure and actual boost pressure and the y-axis straightforward is engine speed so we may want one bar of boost, we may have 1.2 bar of boost, so we are 0.2 bar over target. The wastegate duty will be reduced by 19%. So we want one bar of boost, we have 1.2 bar of boost, we are over boosting. If the wastegate duty should be 60%, it's going to be reduced by 19%, it's going to go down to 41%. Now, most importantly, when setting up custom maps and understanding custom maps, is that you log the uh, interim and the output of that custom map channel. So we can see on the data login, custom map A, I'm just going to remove the min and max for the moment. So custom map A result would be the output of the wastegate duty target boost for wastegate duty map. So this would come in at 60%. And then custom map F, the lookup would be boost error. If we target boost one bar and we've got 1.2, then we're going to be looking up at this value here because we've got a boost error, a positive boost error of 0.2 bar. So the custom map F interim would be minus 19 and the result the output of the map would be that the 60 degrees was reduced down to 41 degrees so our standard wastegate parameter found here would actually read 41 percent
it would be the output of map F. Now proportional means it's a one time only added value. This number is added to the wastegate duty map, be it a positive value if you're under target, negative value if you're over target, it will be added and continuously added depending on the boost error. So as the boost comes in tighter, the amount that's added would come down. The upshift multiplier will still work with the custom maps. Map G is the integral value. So map G set up. This value is enabled to work in mode 3 and 4 as before. The output is wastegate duty. It's going to add the output as an integral value and it means it will be continuously added to the channel to the wastegate duty. x-axis is boost error, y-axis is engine speed. So let's take that off. So engine speed here, boost error here. So this value is continuously added and we can see the min max. This is the minimum and maximum that this is allowed to add. So back to our target boost pressure is maybe one bar. Our actual boost pressure is 1.2 bar. We are 0.2 bar over our target boost. So the proportional will be added, as we just saw, it being minus 19. So that will bring the wastegate duty down to 41%. But say the target boost pressure, say the actual boost pressure, has only dropped from 1.2 bar to 1.1. This is where the integral will step in and continuously reduce the wastegate duty until it pulls it down. So the proportional is a fixed one-time only value. The integral will continuously add it, pulling the wastegate duty down, so in this instance, let's assume we're still at 1.2 bar. The wastegate duty is dropped from 60 to 41. It would now go 40, 39, 38, 37, continuously going down. The frequency, I can't really tell you the exact frequency. Um, if you come to me on email, I will give you... Um, um, some further data on that, but if you find that it's having too much of an effect, making your numbers obviously bigger or smaller means it's going to have less of an effect. It's every time um, the ECU clock goes round, it's going to process this calculation. This is uh, my custom boost control that I that I set up. Um, it works extremely well. I've passed it on to a couple of the tuners. I know John Visconti and Ian Litchfield have been using it, and they say it works extremely well. Um, again, set up against boost error and engine speed. So we don't want these numbers getting too big. The integral, the min and the max, means the maximum this is ever going to be able to add is 10%, and the minimum, um, the maximum we can add is 10%, and the minimum, i.e. the maximum amount it can take away, is minus 25. So in the event of a huge boost error for a long period, the, the wastegate duty isn't going to go out of control trying to correct the boost pressure. You can also set up activation. So you might say that the um, proportional integral you only want to work when you're close to the target. That's all possible. You can set the activation definition. So you could say... that the map is something like um, boost error 
and maybe you um, want the threshold um, as um, 0 0.2 bar F2 minus 0 0.2 bar and we just save and close and because it's set up against boost error now the maps will only become active when we get within 0 0.2 bar of our target we can also set delay period um, and we can we need to select that the map is only active so the integral only starts to work when the boost pressure is within 0 0.2 bar of its target so if we want a bar of boost the map's only going to work when we are 0 0.8 bar or 1.2 bar okay so now on to um, traction traction control so this is um, a feature that we brought over from the BRZ where it's been used quite a lot and using wheel speed differential works extremely well um, just wait for some setup time on our own car to actually test this um, but the the settings that we've been using on the BRZ have certainly worked very well it's set up in custom map M and custom map N so we go into custom map M um, what we have here is a map that's enabled in mode 4 there's no activation or delays we don't need the integral min max and the output is a calculation all we want to do is calculate wheel slip so we've set this map up to be a calculation the x-axis is the wheel speed front right and the y-axis is rear right so this is the front right hand side wheel this is the rear right hand side wheel so front rear front on the top rear on the back so we can see the GTR when it slips it's going to be that the rear wheels are the ones that slip uh, most attraction going to the rear be the back wheels that slip first so let's um, say the vehicle's doing 50 uh, kilometers an hour and suddenly the wheel slips what's going to happen is the rear wheels are going to go up to 70 given as a wheel speed differential of 20 kilometers an hour if the front wheels were to slip nothing's really going to happen it's going to be the back wheels that are going to slip hence why the table set up this way we've also set the table up this way in the BRZ for the same reasons it's the rear wheel rear wheel drive car it's going to be the rear wheels that are going to slip now people have different opinions on this but with custom maps you've got the power to set it up how you want so for this particular example we're going to choose 50 kilometers an hour rear wheels are slipping this is only one side um, as well so we're, we're not dealing with left hand side we could set up further custom maps to deal with um, the left side as well as the right side so we're going to say we've got a wheel speed slip of 20 kilometers an hour the output of the map was a calculation and we're going to go to map n custom map n is set up it applies ignition retard based on the amount of wheel slip so custom map n it's working in mode 4 the output is ignition timing and it's going to be added to the current ignition timing the car's running we've got x-axis is engine speed and y-axis is the output this is the important part is the output of custom map M which is the one that's calculating the wheel slip amount so our particular example 50 kilometers an hour rear wheel slip 70 the output of the map is going to be 20 currently we're doing 3000 rpm it's going to take 30 degrees off of the ignition timing at this particular point 
if the rear wheel speeds were to increase up to 80, remember this obviously happens very quickly, if it goes up to 80, that's going to be a 30 kilometers an hour difference, the timing's going to go back minus 40 degrees. Minus 40 added on whatever the timing is, so if the timing's currently um, 10 degrees, then it's going to go back to minus 30. As the wheel speeds come down, as the slip gets less, the ignition retard is reduced and um, the torque's brought back in as traction is gained. Well, obviously, um, the higher the slip ratio, the more torque we need to kill, the more ignition retard we've got to put in. The other thing is, you will tend to find that really up to 5, maybe 10 kilometers an hour, you don't actually want it to do very much. So if you fine tune this map to suit, to suit your car, to suit the power output, to suit the um, type of setup that you've got, the tyres, etc., um, you can jiggle this map to set it up. But a few tuners have been using this now. I know um, you guys may well have seen videos that John Visconti has been doing um, online, Ian Litchfield as well, done a lot, of uh, a lot of testing with traction control at the ring in Germany, doing some, some big drifts. Um, working extremely well and as I say John's been doing lots of testing, refining it. Um, most people know how um, how vocal John is let's say and he likes nothing better than to share his findings with other GTR tuners so always feel free to ask John his findings and I'm sure he can't wait to tell you his best settings. Okay. So I mean, onto, onto the boost control, a few, a few tuners have been using um, other GTR tuning tools, let's say. Um, they set up boost in a very simple way, and it is completely possible to copy and paste your boost maps over from other settings that you may have been using um, in Equitech software. Um, if you're not sure how to sort them out, then just let us know and we can help you out. It's, um, we like the factory boost control. It works extremely well. We've added custom maps. You can write your own boost control now, as I say, the one we've demonstrated today with a target boost pressure and adding in compensation factors. You see there, coolant temp, air temp. You can add atmospheric pressure. You can add um, a throttle angle multiplier. You can add per gear and you can have true proportional and integral um, so this is our preferred boost control but again if you have a more simplistic one that you're used to and you like you can simply copy and paste your settings over um, I know quite a few tuners who like to do that and um, they tell me it works quite well though I'm not convinced myself okay um, Setting our boost control up against the factory, setting it up in mode 3 and 4 as we've done. I've done lots of testing out on the road and I'm on mode 2. Uh, on factory boost control, boost control is good. I swap over to mode 3. It's the custom boost control, just written in a different way. And again, works um, extremely well. So it's, it's down to the tuner really to set up the boost control how he likes. We've set up a typical E85 setup. A typical E85 setup without a flex fuel sensor. So obviously with four map switch modes, you don't have to have a flex fuel sensor. You can just set it up so it's dedicated. Now, um, custom map G is the ethanol sensor scaling. Um, coolant temperature um, versus sensor scaling. Map H is the injector size multiplier. RPM versus the result of map G. Map I is the ignition timing um, versus RPM versus the ethanol ratio. And the coolant temp gauge will be shut up to show E85 during map switch. So first we go to map G. So because we've got a ROM file that we developed for flex fuel, 
um, import, we're not actually using that. We've kept the profile the same. So we're going to say that regardless of what the flex field sensor voltage is that would come in through the second math sensor, the, um, the content is going to be 85. So it's enabled to work in all four modes. You can have it set up so that it only works in mode three or four. It's going to be a calculation. Um, we've got an x-axis which is coolant temperature and a y-axis which is the secondary air math. So this is the way we import um, the flex fuel sensor, although it's not being used because this is an, a non-flex fuel sensor setup. So going down, map page. So custom map H is set up to output, to multiply um, the injector size. So making the injector size smaller, which will make the ECU increase the injector open time. So pretending that the output of um, is constantly 85, saying that we're running full E85 all the time, because we can't measure it without a flexible sensor, we're going to get a multiplication of about 0.75. So again, using the custom data logging, we can run the setup using the custom maps we need to be monitoring the output of map g so we would log um, the result of map g which you know can come in at 85 and then map h we can log the interim which would be the lookup 0.75 and then the result um, which would be the injector size times 0.75 so a fairly simplistic way of getting 25 percent more fuel into the um, into the GTR because we're running ethanol. Now if you find that you want to run 30%, we actually run about 32% when we're doing the testing on the GTR, on the BRZ, sorry. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when we get the kit on the car, uh, how much we have to run here. It's quite difficult to get E85 in the UK and it's actually 10 times more expensive than regular fuel. So uh, we have to special order it and when we do get it, um, yeah, it it's quite expensive and um, we've got 25 litres ready to go in the car and as most of you know the GTR does like a drink so we're probably going to get through it in no time um, but no looking forward to do the testing and the plug and play kit is certainly going to be very good um, so on to the next map map I is ignition timing now on the uh, BRZ FRS we managed to get around 8 degrees into the car um, but on the GTR, I feel we've got a bit more conservative. I mean, this is down to your tuning, really. But looking on the ignition timing map here, it's enabled in all the modes. The output is going to be ignition timing. The output of this map is going to be added to ignition timing. So any negative values that we enter would be taken away. Positive values are going to be added. We're going to advance the timing. X axis is engine speed and Y axis is the output of map G, which we are using because it's non flex fuel input, we're just saying it's dedicated E85. So 85% we're going to go along um, this line here, 85 is going to be interpolating between these two, and this is going to be an amount of timing that we would tend to add. Now it might be that we can get more timing in, it might be we need less timing. I should think we should be able to have this and a few more. As I say, we've got about 8 degrees in the um, in the BRZ GT86. And I'm pretty sure um, JRM in Sweden um, got around 5, 7, possibly 8 degrees of advancing. So we'll come back to your results once they're done. Um, now the final one, uh, we're not going to be using but the coolant temp gauge will show E85 so when we come down to the coolant temp gauge so map switch coolant temp gauge display in mode 4 in mode 4 we are going to say during map switch mode use the output of custom map G custom map G has been set up it's filled with 85 so whenever we go into map switch mode, especially mode 4, it's going to show 85, showing the current ethanol contents. Now if we switch over to the 
ROM that is set up for a flex fuel sensor. So this ROM has been configured custom maps, it was map G, map G, view up here. So this is coolant temperature along the top, the x-axis, and the y-axis is uh, the Zetronic voltage output that's coming in through the secondary map sensor. So typically E85 will deliver around 4.3 4.3 volts and we're converting that voltage, um, it go from 0 to 5 volts, and we're converting that voltage into a, an ethanol ratio, content ratio. So if we had half a tank of E85 and we fill the car right up, we're probably going to end up somewhere around E40. So the voltage will come down, the output of map G is going to be 40, indicating a 40% mix ratio. The important thing we wanted to show here was um, map H So again, if we were um, ethanol sensor coming out 2 volts, indicating a 40% mix ratio, then the lookup for the injector scaling is going to be 0.88. We're charging change. We are multiplying the injector size by 0.88, which will deliver less fuel quantity because we've got less ethanol in the fuel. Coming all the way down to when we've got no ethanol left, multiplied by 1, stand injector size, running regular petrol, regular gas. With the coolant temp gauge configuration set to map G, we can use during map switch mode, it will display on the coolant temp gauge, it will display whatever the current ethanol ratio is. So we don't need to have the ethanol content sensor in the car, we don't need to extend the wiring, we don't need to pierce the bulkhead to get the wiring through, etc. We can see during map switch mode, Maybe you configure map switch mode 4 is your ethanol. Maybe you set it up just to see what the content ratio is. But you can tell exactly how much ethanol you've got. We display it on the coolant temperature gauge during map switch mode if you set the maps up like this. Okay, so there's, there's three examples of custom maps, how they can be used. Um, and many, many more things you can do with it. You can do a simple... Um, per gear ignition retard, you can do um, maybe a vehicle speed based um, ignition retard, very easy to do. The possibilities are endless. Um, get some suggestions. Um, of other things. Um, fuel system fail safe when fuel drops fuel pressure set up as an import um, going into safe mode if you're losing fuel pressure but you can see from what we've just done today the possibilities of um, if you look at the output definitions AFR, mass airflow, injector angle we can use the switch gear, we can use the race ROM boost controller, the cruise control switch to swap between columns. So we could have injector angle in here, we could have um, race ROM boost controller input here, so we're using the uh, cruise control to go up and down this column, and we can change cam timing, ignition timing, um, injector angle, the list is endless what we can do, adjusting live. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of the custom map.